follow this uh, comment all the way back to NC Blue Dot's videos on the Gateway Scandal um, and read the comments. I, it is a really important discussion that I think you all are going to want to be interested in, not just because it's juicy tea and it's scandal, but it's also a good example of what I've been talking about when I say that Christianity, and I'd say Christianity in the Americas, is often practiced more as a cult uh, than as some form of like a religion that focuses on providing their adherence with uh, ancient wisdom or a wisdom that they believe to be ancient and um, a good source of knowledge for the adherent to uh, take in and then like deconstruct and reconstruct their lives uh, using that knowledge. And instead, you get what we see in American Christianity, which is this inability to think critically about things that have gone on um, and an inability to understand, like to adopt common sense. So I'm, I'm gonna keep this short and I'll go into this later in a video when I have more time. But, and this is not a negative comment about the person who made the comment in the video that you're about, that you're gonna see. But common sense would tell you that if a person has admitted to and really in their admission is what we saw with the uh, gateway mega pastor in his admission he lied about what happened now when a person <laughs> lies about what happened in the church in on in from the platform the pulpit where they have claimed that they are teaching ancient truths like about God and et cetera, Christianity. When this person does this and they conduct themselves in this way, uh, and then there may be statements that the person wasn't really convicted of a crime uh, or they're acquitted, uh, should these people like that pastor be allowed to then continue preaching from that pulpit after they just did, after they did what they did? Um, and or but I'll let you go back because I don't I don't I don't want this to be a long video. And I, I want you all to think about the lack of common sense that uh, people who practice Christianity as a cultist and they practice Christianity as cult that they lack that they lack that common sense because common sense would tell you when a person <laughs> when a person admits to you what they did but then while admitting what they did lies to you about what they did and had been lying to you all along about the quality and the kind of character that they had common sense would tell you that you should disassociate with that church that you should consider whether who knew and who knew and did nothing about what went on and whether if that religion can from sect to sect like Catholicism covered up all the, those priests uh, and what they did how Christianity and Christian sex uh, uh, different segregation or sects of Christianity cover up for um, moral failings and they allow those people for decades to continue on teaching from that pulpit, teaching you that you need to ameliorate your character and conform it to Christian beliefs, um, you should begin to question whether or not that religion is something that you want to have anything to do, do with. And if you want to have something to do with that religion, do you want to have something to do with churches? Because church is something, and which is well known, that Christians created. They create their congregations. They group themselves in this way. How a church is supposed to be conducted. Are you going to sing songs? How? When are you going to teach? The That whole formula. And I find that if a person is operating, if they're a critical thinking person who is operating with uh, a sense of self-awareness and a desire to preserve themselves and the people around them, that they would begin to question whether Christianity is healthy that, or whether it is even something that you want to associate yourself with. Or they, many people decide that they may associate with what they consider is the deity of Christianity, but not with 
Christians who group themselves in churches who have writh routinely ritualistically, um, what is a good TikTok way to say it? Mishandled their congregants, harmed their congregants, uh, and so indel indelibly brainwashed them to be okay with their victimization that we're now in a position to where we're looking at Christians who believe that they should still vote for Trump when we know that he was just, he's what got 34 felonies, 34 convictions. And that's just the beginning. So I think people, and I said this was gonna be a lot shorter, people need to begin to evaluating. It's why I've been telling you, you guys, you're about to see a set of books and exposés that are going to come out after, because we we haven't even made it through election season yet. We're about to see a debate between um, two people who shouldn't even be running for president. The felon and the guy who hasn't been convicted of his war crimes of bombing babies and killing innocent civilians. He, who is a long, who sits in a long line of presidents who are all war, <laughs> who are all committers of war crimes. But um, I digress. I think people need to begin to question whether or not they are um, acting like a cultist to the cult of America and that they are not truly thinking clearly about what they're seeing. Because when you see a president who knows about and looks at the bombing and, and the murder of innocent civilians and is unable, his administration is unable to admit to that and to consider that that is reality and that is actually happening instead in, instead they allow the them to themselves to explain it away and try to spin it into something else i think you all need to begin to wonder and to consider whether or not you need to deconstruct out of the cult of america and americana because unfortunately we are all humans and humans have a tendency to die when maimed, bombed, killed. Um, and because of that, and because of the risk of what's currently going on and how that's escalating, could escalate into wars, which are going to, which is going to drag um, Gen Z <laughs> and millennials uh, into a war, which we shouldn't even have to be worrying, worrying about. And then it's going to drag the rest of everybody who's not fighting into situations of terroristic, terroristic activity while dealing with um, uh, corporate corruption uh, and also dealing with um, living in a country in which the middle and lower classes are being obliterated so that the vulture class can just be greedy and collect more money. So, hey, I'll, I'll leave it to you all in the comments. I know I said a lot, but I think there's a lot going on that we need to think about. Uh, comment. I'm I'm speak I'm trying to come up with the words. I shouldn't have to explain this, but anyone that's actually like accused of being involved in any sort of of child essay uh, or grooming children, his father did do that by the way. You want someone that's connected to that. Even though the court acquitted him, you're okay with them just reopening a church. This is why 40 to 50% of the electorate are going to vote for a convicted felon. A lot of you are aware of Gateway Church and Robert Morris. If you're not, it's one of the largest mega churches in America with 20,000 members. They also carry a large uh, worship element of their church called Gateway Worship. If you know Carrie Job, a lot of other famous worship leaders that have gone on to produce album after album after album over the last couple of decades. So Gateway is one of the most popular churches in America. And their senior pastor, Robert Morris, a lot of you might know him, uh, has resigned from Gateway under abuse allegations. The victim let the church know of these allegations in 2005, but they're now coming out and saying that they didn't have all the necessary information. They knew that he had an extramarital affair with a young lady, but they had no, no idea that it was a 12-year-old child. I call bullshit. They said in 2005 he went through restoration, which is basically a marketing phrase to let the public know that their pastor is being held accountable, but he's held that position since he took over in the year 2000. 
my mistake, he didn't take over. He started Gateway Church in, in the year 2000. As I was reading about this story, I found this. If any of y'all remember Brian Houston of Hillsong Church, he resigned a couple years ago under the allegations of his father uh, really harming children, and he covered it up. Well, he's been found uh, not guilty and acquitted of those charges. But he doesn't care. Him and his wife are going to start a new church in 2024, so they're just going to do the same thing that they've always done. So not only can you be accused of either covering up allegations or actually participating in those abuse allegations, you never lose your job. And if you do resign, you just start another church. This is what evangelical Christianity is in America and in Australia, apparently. A lot of you are aware of Gateway